When it comes down to, uh, well, you know, picking up your first car when you're maybe a little bit younger, a lot of times we wanna get the fanciest thing in the world. I remember when I got my car, the first car I wanted to get was a 1992 Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 in red because that is the best car to work on, reliable, low interest, it's got two doors, you only need two, you don't need four. And like there was no comprehension of just how terrible that platform was to deal with when you're not as experienced as somebody that's like 40 years old and has 10 of them. And sometimes we've made that mistake in the past. A lot of times the cars that we want to own, especially when they're our first fun car, or first sports car, just happen to be some of the most reliable, some of the less not very fun, and sometimes just downright not the right car to buy at the right period of time. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So I'm Alex, alex.fi on Instagram, and today we're gonna be talking about some of the top worst cars to own when you're just jumping into buying a modified car. Let's get into it. So the first car on the list would be your 2010 and above Chevy Camaros. Right now, they are a fantastic car to drive. Don't get me wrong. And they're an absolute ton of fun. They're loud, they're fast, they're quick. There's just a couple problems with them. First off, when it's your first car, it's a very difficult car to inherently drive right out of the gate. You can see absolutely nothing outside of that car because the A-frame pillars are so damn big. I'd pair that on top of the fact that the cars are still a little bit expensive and you can actually get a lot more bang for your buck on a lot of different cars that can give you some of the same experience. Chevy Camaros are sometimes a great time and sometimes not so much of a good time. And since it is a 2000 plus and newer, a lot of times you're still paying a little bit of the new car bro tax on your engine modified parts. Sometimes it's just good to buy an older car, even though nobody wants to. And if that's not enough to scoot your boot, you also have to deal with the fact that you've got a big old V8 underneath the hood, which is gonna ultimately result in some less than stellar gas mileage. I know, you guys probably don't care about gas mileage, but back in my day, that was $5.40 a gallon son all right it was expensive i remember because i remember having to fill up my tank and it was like 97 dollars. and my car was not a 97 dollar gas tank kind of car next up is one that probably a lot of people might get a little bit mad at but don't be mad at the messenger okay don't be mad at me but it will be a car that a lot of people are familiar with we would recommend staying away from sometimes depending on if you do your research or not, which would be a Subaru WRX. Now, you have to remember that Subaru WRXs are great cars. Rexes have always been great cars. They sound fantastic. They're all wheel drive, so you can drive them all year round. They're a ton of fun. They're sporty. They look aggressive out of the gate, and they're actually pretty cool cars. But when they're your first car that you're trying to own, a lot of times you can make some pretty rookie mistakes when buying this kind of platform. The first and most notable mistake is not understanding what type of car that you're buying, because most Subaru WRXs are absolutely thrashed on. They have modifications up the wazoo that were all done in a garage that nobody actually knows. There's maintenance papers everywhere, but nowhere at the same time. And for some reason, the car makes a blow off valve noise when you're not actually putting anything down on the gas pedal to make the noise when you let off. There's some things that are just a little finicky about Subaru WRXs and they're inherently not the most reliable thing in the world. You can ask anybody that tells you a good old spark plug issue or they make fun of the fact that, oh, well, at least I don't have to deal with the rust in the quarter panel or, oh, hey, at least mine starts. Well, like sometimes, bear with me, Subaru WRXs can be great cars and sometimes they're not. But the unfortunate part about it is the fact that Subaru WRXs, when you are buying one, you're taking a little bit of a risk. You don't want to take risks when it's one of your first cars that you're, you know, modifying. And did I mention the fact that pretty much every single Subaru WRX just happens to somehow and for some reason be a cop magnet not saying that the 17 or 16 year old you is you know an absolutely outstanding citizen but in terms of like what they're going to perceive you as they're probably going to give you a ticket because guess what you got loud exhaust and your car is blue and it's got a big old exhaust out the back and they don't like that. Another car that seems to be one of the old days of Subaru WRX, which would be the Mitsubishi Eclipse. Now, if you guys remember the Mitsubishi Eclipse, I do too, and uh, rip to Mitsubishi, but that's besides the point. The Mitsubishi Eclipse used to be a fantastic car to go and buy and modify, and it used to be the hot car. It was actually like, I would argue the car before the SRT4 became the car. The problem is, is that Mitsubishi Eclipses don't inherently have the greatest reliability in the world. And because they're kind of an oddball in terms of what people would pick up these days, not a lot of people are willing to take care of them before they opt to sell them. A lot of times they make for a fantastic, you know, daily driver with some terrible tires on the front that somebody just dumps the clutch every single time to do a little bit of like a front wheel drive squeal. And eclipses just aren't that 
much of a platform anymore that people really want to spend time around. We haven't seen too many eclipses, at least up here in the north side of the country, where the purchase ultimately was a good one because a lot of times there's a ton of issues with the car just straight out of the gate. Keeping those eclipses alive are a lot like keeping talons alive. It's really hard. But moving on to the other side of the fence, the one car that everybody wants to own, the one car that still has the bro tax, that looks good, that feels good, that drives fun, that like you, you're like the guy or gal that has the car. And that car is the Nissan 240SX. I mean, it's the car. It's like the drift car. You don't even have to drift and it's the car. And for people that want a 240SX, if it's their first car and they've never purchased a car before in their entire life, this is gonna be probably the worst car that you could buy at the same exact time. And here's why. Nissan 240SXs are um, only two doors and they are inherently the toughest cars to actually buy. They face an enormous bro tax on them. They face an enormous amount amount of wheel and deal and punishment from people that have owned them before you and they're just not a great daily driver they're not practical in pretty much any way now there's going to be a couple of people argue out there that say they are because they have back seats in a passenger you know seat and their car runs and there's nothing wrong with the ka or an sr swap and you can definitely daily drive it and then usually that just those comments actually never happen. We haven't dealt with anything like that in the past. But the thing that's gonna keep you out of a 240SX isn't the fact that I'm telling you not to get one, it's the fact that your budget's not gonna allow you to grab one in the quality that you want that's gonna make it a good car out of the gate. A lot of times those cars have gotten insanely expensive with bro tax because why not? Because it's a 240 and that's just how it goes these days. If you want to pick one up and you do have an endless money pit, I mean, you could go nuts. But in terms of if you had an endless money pit, there's a lot of other cars that you could pick up that are going to do around the same thing, except better, run better, look a little bit nicer, be a little bit more reliable, not be thrashed to bits, and they're going to be okay. And the last car that we probably recommend that you stay away from, I know you love just hearing us talk about it, but that would be a Ford Mustang. Now, Ford Mustangs are fantastic cars and I absolutely love them. I think they're one of the best bang for your buck cars you can get out there right now if you're looking for something fun real wheel drive sounds fast and can actually sometimes be fast but for a car that you're just looking to pick up for your first car or maybe your first car to modify i'd probably recommend staying away from it the fact that they're rear wheel drive is initially a reason to stay away from a lot of times because they're rear wheel drive and they're a little bit burnout happy a lot of people end up making accidents because guess what when you're young there's this thing called testosterone that they teach you in health class and a lot of times you want to do things you wouldn't normally do in front of your mother and when you do those things that you wouldn't normally do in front of your mother you usually mess them up because you didn't watch the other videos where I say that you should go make a fool of yourself in a parking lot you decided to do it in front of your high school then you end up making a mistake and then the video goes on YouTube and then you have to pay the insurance bills and it's just not an overall good time Ford Mustangs are fantastic cars to pick up once you have your other car that you're actually going to daily drive the Ford Mustang is not the car that you would daily drive and if you're looking for your first car to purchase I probably recommend staying away from that one but if you can get over the fact that they are real wheel drive happy, love doing burnouts, and you can deal with the fact that it gets terrible gas mileage, you're probably not gonna have any money left from your Taco Bell bi-weekly paycheck because you have to deal with the fact that you're a young folk, probably a male, and has to pay insurance. Because guess what? Insurance companies don't like you. And for some reason, they can charge more if you're a dude between 18 to 25, and that's okay. Which I, I feel like is not okay, but that's, that's just how the world works. That's another reason that we probably recommend staying away from the Ford Mustang. Sometimes when you're looking to get into your first car, you gotta go with something a little bit more moderate, a little bit more conservative, if you will. Maybe not something that's turbocharged V8 or a you know super loud, obnoxious two-door coupe that's meant to do drifties and skids and things like that. Sometimes you just gotta pick your battles, pick a simple, clean car, maybe an old VIP saloon, put it on the ground and some nice wheels and tires, because guess what? Not everybody needs to go a million miles an hour and if you're looking to pick up your first car it's probably going to be best if you couldn't i'm alex from fitment industries let us know in the comment section below what you want us to talk about next and of course if you're looking for wheels tires and suspension be sure to check out fitmentindustries.com we will see you later peace